Just before we start watching this video, there are a few words and new expressions that I want you to learn first. And then during the video, during the interview, I want you to pay attention to how we're going to be using this, this, those words or expressions and when. So the first expression you're going to learn today is eating a bag of dicks. That means that you were not doing well. You were, it was not a success. It was horrible. You failed. That's what it means. Okay, this is an expression to say that you failed. So the other expression that you're gonna hear today is shut the bed, which means same thing as eating a bag of dicks. Same thing, you failed again. It, it just miserably failed. You should die. That's what it means. The other expression you're gonna learn today is having a thin skin. So if you have a thin skin, you're too sensitive. Things just make you upset very easily. Okay? You're a pussy. I got offended what you said. Thick skin is what a comedian needs to have to do comedy in front of strangers and just be able to express whatever they want to say and you're tough, you don't give a shit. You don't give a fly fuck motherfucker. So basically, if you're watching this video and you have a thin skin, you can go ahead and go eat a bag of dicks. That's it. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm here in Vancouver, BC now with my awesome friend and comedian, Byron Beltran. Did I say your name right? No. no? Byron Bertram. Bertram. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do it again. Quite a good friend. Byron Bertram. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Bertram. Oh, well, that's funny. That's Bertram. Funny yeah, keep it. Okay. Byron Bert 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 Bertram. That's Byron. it. Bertram. Yeah. Say it. Can, you, can you say it? Byron Bertram. There you go. There you go. He cannot say better than anybody else's own name. I know my name. Like, I, can, I memorized it years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know it off by heart. Every letter. <laughs> uh, he's been doing comedy for over 13 years. Stand up comedy. He's also an actor, voiceover, and a street performer. And now I want you to listen to a, a little bit more about his story. And uh, yeah, so how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Yeah. It's raining in Vancouver, very typical weather of Vancouver. Yeah. It rains nine months of the year and then it's beautiful. You see the mountains and the ocean and then it rains. It's like a, it's like a supermodel that won't stop crying. <laughs> it's beautiful though, but she's cold. Yeah. She's it's like cold. Brazil except just shittier. <laughs> How did you start with stand-up comedy? Well, I was doing street performing for a long time. I do a juggling, busking comedy show with crowd interaction and I learned how to juggle this theater program. I was always in a high school drama and stuff like that. And um, I just kind of always wanted to do stand-up since I was a teenager, watching stand-up on TV. And my parents are both artists, and I'm an only child, and you know, just being an insecure kid, just needing tons of attention. So I was just a class clown, got picked yeah. on all the time at a, pretty much an old Chinese school here in Vancouver. It's one of the few white kids there. And I just kind of felt alone, and I, I just kind of managed to develop this sort of sense of humor that I inherited from my dad. And, and uh, I just always wanted to do stand-up at an early age, just seeing it on TV and just getting validation from strangers, you know? It's like, it's like a drug, fills that void of emptiness that yeah. all of us artists share. And we don't have money for therapists. Exactly. So it's free therapy. It's just like you talking and them laughing and then uh, you feel great yeah. until the next day and then you need to do it again or you, you hate yourself. We're just sharing our misery and make people laugh. Yeah. All right, great. But so you, you mentioned you watched someone on, on TV, was it? Or, or I watched, why? yeah, a bunch of comics. Uh, who do you remember age. that it was that that person who influenced you? It was like, wow, this guy. I think Andy Kaufman was a big one. He was just crazy and insane. Um, yeah. The late Andy Kaufman, Norm Macdonald, uh, it's a big one. Uh, George Carlin. Oh yeah, wow. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld, Bill Hicks, uh, Chris Rock. Chris Rock, a lot. Uh, even Seinfeld a little bit, you know. Yeah. So yeah, just. And then just a lot of people that I just kind of forgot their names too, but I just like, oh, that guy's funny. So you, you've been doing comedy for a really long time now, and you've been on road, on, on road like a lot. Comedy, yeah, I've right? traveled to a number of countries and tons of cities. What place did you, you've been performing? Uh, well, throughout Canada, uh, throughout the States a little bit, uh, England a lot, Scotland, oh. Ireland, uh, Australia quite a bit, uh, New Zealand, been to Holland, uh, Holy shit. been to... Uh, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, and uh, Dubai, actually. Wow. Yeah. So the places that you've been 
performing stand-up comedy, what are your, what's your favorite to, to perform so far? Like, I'd say London is up there. Just the culture of, of comedy in, in, in England and London is just, you know, a real drunky drinking culture. A lot of just, you know, <laughs> just drunk people that just love love uh, love taking the piss, having fun, <laughs> having a laugh. Uh, and just the pub culture of supporting performing arts too. Yeah. And uh, it's just a real the population is just so big for the the size of area and yeah. they all they're all alcoholics. They're just drunk and they just want to they just want to take the piss and laugh and laugh yeah. at their own misery and, and uh, quality teeth. life there. Their teeth and their teeth is terrible and teeth. you know yeah horrible their teeth, teeth is horrible and you know your teeth look good in comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> So, uh, do you have any funny story on, on the road, something that happened and you can share with us? Uh, okay, one I could think of, I was in New Zealand and uh, this guy asked me to, to perform at this nightclub in New Zealand and I was, I was really sort of just starting stand-up. And uh, it was an all Maori, uh, and it was all Maori nightclub, I was the only white guy in there. So then, but, but he, it was horrible, he just basically stopped the music. And it was just like, and then it'd be like, and now welcome to the stage, Byron from Canada. And they stopped dancing. And then there's me being like, hey, I'm gonna do comedy. And right away, people just like, get off, go back to Canada, you can't, get off. You know, it was like, and I just ate a bag of dicks. It was terrible. Totally ate a bag of dicks. It was, it was the worst thing. And what do you see more so about that is, yeah, yeah. then this guy come up on stage, and you know, then just say, like, what do you say? This cunt gets off and goes back to Canada. And everybody cheered. And I just tried to like finish my time. Uh, my contractual obligation, and the owner was like, "Well, I guess that was a bad idea." And I still got paid. What was even worse is we we were in the middle of nowhere, and I had to wait till the nightclub closed for this guy to give me a ride home. Jeez. So I'm just hanging out in the nightclub, trying to avoid getting into fights, having everybody just look at me with death in their eyes, you know, <laughs> just just knowing that I shat the bed, and and they just hated me from the get-go, you know. I, I just felt like I was somebody with Ebola, Jeez. you know. Who wasn't quarantined? It was it was terrible. That's the life of comedy. But that's the life of comedy, man. Sometimes, you know, you pick and choose. Your, you hit, well, sometimes you just do stuff. You know, you do stuff that you're not aware is, is going to be a bad situation, and you only, <laughs> you know. Anyway, it happens to everybody. And sometimes I, I notice that we, when, when we express our opinion, right, we we, we might hurt someone's feelings or ego yeah. or that inflamed ego that people have. Like, you should not say that to me, right? Yeah, people cherry pick what they get offended about. It's like, you, you yeah. can't talk about rape because, you know, I was raped or somebody like that. But they're fine if you talk about murder. Yeah. You know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just like, don't be racist or homophobic, but you could be sexist. That's fine with me. <laughs> hey, be sexist all you want, be racist, but my uncle's gay. So, hey, stay away from the gay stuff. Because yeah, yeah, I just yeah. arbitrarily chose what I'm going to be offended at. Yeah. I think if you got a thin skin, yeah. You know, don't come to stand-up comedy, okay? If you don't like something, just be like, not for me. You know, thin skin. Yeah, if you got if you got a thin skin, if you can't if you can't handle a joke, just don't don't come to comedy. Yeah, it's like going to a strip club and be offended because saw boobs. Yeah, that's exactly it. it makes no sense. You well, if you're going to a strip club and you're offended that she whipped out her cock, <laughs> you know, it's like it's gonna happen, especially if you go to shitty strip clubs. Yeah. So when you think about Brazil, what comes to your mind? Oh man, I think of uh, sunshine. I think of Christ the Redeemer. I think of uh, I think of plastic surgery. Uh -huh. I think of uh, really convincing transvestites. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of crying at the sight of German soccer players. Okay. Uh, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think of uh, Eitan Senna. Uh, Eitan Senna. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Saw a documentary about that. It yeah. Made me cry almost. Um, what else do I think of? I think of uh, Coca Cabana Beach. Coca Cabana Beach. Yeah, I think of uh, girls. I think of the girl from Ipanema. Mm. Oh my God. Booty. Samba. I think of booty. I think of great tanned asses. Ugh. Yeah, I know. Sexy asses. Booty. Uh, I think of capoeira. Oh yeah. I think of uh, more ass. Capoeira Just is more booty. ass. It's creepy capoeira. I think. It is. It's like. It's like. Yeah. It's like this dancing martial arts. Like I'm gonna kill you, but check out this dancing. <laughs> It's uh, it's pretty amazing. I think of um, more ass, just ass it's, and tits. Yeah, I Oh, god. Beautiful girl. Basically, when I think of Brazil, I, I get horny. Who doesn't? I don't know why you're here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of Brazilians, for some reason, they they really they love to to, to speak English. They really want to learn how to speak English really well. Uh, so, do you think stand-up comedy, watching stand-up comedy, could be something helpful to for for Brazilians or any ESL? 
to, to improve their, their language skills. It, it is, it is, definitely. I mean, they say humor is the, the most complex form of, of language, yeah. let alone the English language, because, you know, there's so many different types of, of, of words that you use, so, many, so much phrasing, so much, um, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Figures of speech, mm -hmm. expressions, yeah, yeah. Um, that basically you would only get through, through comedy. You know, just, just saying just ridiculous things that you only say in sort of a comedic sense. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that comedy really is sort of the most complex form of the, the language. But I think you need to have a little bit of a, you know, good grasp on the English language before you, you start watching a lot of stand-up. Like yeah, if yeah. they only know like, you know, a handful of words, it's just going to get lost on you. Yeah. You know. So it'd be like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, sense. yeah, I'm not gonna learn how to. I don't know, do, I'm not gonna learn how to do capoeira before you know learn how to like the walk. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, and also if you don't know enough English as a comedian, and you come to a comedy club, and you're not laughing, we're not, we don't know that you don't speak English. We just yeah. think that we suck, and then we get really insecure, and we get massive low self-esteem. We're like, this audience sucks, and then you start hating the audience. You're like, those, those Brazilian assholes, they hated me. And then at the end of the show, they'll be like, that was really good, I just don't speak English. And then you feel bad that you were hating them because you thought they hated you, but they just didn't speak language. So learn enough language that you're able to laugh at the comedian. Or just pretend. Fake or just pretend, laugh. be a good actor. Just fake it, okay? <laughs> it's basically, it's all about us. Yeah. It's all about the comedian. Either go an actor or a woman. Yeah. Fake it. <laughs> just fake it. <laughs> we don't care if you're genuine. Just make us feel good. What do you think about doing comedy in Brazil? If people could actually understand, if you have like an audience of, of people that actually understand your jokes, what do you think about doing comedy in Brazil? I'd love to, in a heartbeat. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you had me in Brazil. I'd love to see Brazil. Yeah. yeah. I want to see tits and ass and just sun. And if I could do jokes there, that would be a bonus. Yeah. Absolutely. Sign me up. I'm coming to Brazil. Learn the language. Yeah, learn the language. Yeah, I don't want to learn Portuguese. Yeah. Too much work. You learn English. <laughs> it's all about me. <laughs> Where do people can find you? Uh, you can find me. Uh, basically, it's ByronBertram.com. Uh, but better, check out, uh, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to me on YouPorn. No, it's uh, Byron Bertram, B-Y-R-O-N. B E R T R A M. Uh, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. Uh, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Byron Bertram. Uh, I also have a podcast called The Dry Shave Show. Yeah. Me and an English guy, uh, Ivan Penaluna, we do a lot of funny stuff. So just uh, check out on uh, iTunes, uh, uh, Podbeam Network, uh, Dry Shave Show. Uh, you can find me all over the place. Byron Bertram. Yeah. By the way, all his information, his link is right here uh, below. Right so there. make sure, right here, so just click on it. I can see it right and, now. And it, it, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's right there. Just click on the link below, yeah. follow him, uh, watch his comedy because you're going to learn a lot if you, English is, is not your first language. And even if your English is your first language, just watch him and he's funny. He's like one of my favorite comedians, no, no joke. He's like a good friend of mine here in Vancouver. And thanks for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and to his channel too. And that's it. How We're do done. Say, thank you in Portuguese. Uh, obrigado. Obrigado. Yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs>